Hi, my name is Lindsay Buck with Coravin, and today I'm talking with Marvina Robinson, who's labeled B. Stuyvesant Champagne is now available on the Coravin Wine Shop. Welcome, Marvina. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm happy to be a part of the Coravin family. Absolutely. We thought this would be a cool way to kick off not only Black History Month, but also Month of Love with the first female Black proprietor of a champagne house, which is really remarkable. So congratulations. Thank you. I never realized that I would get, you know, the title of being one of the few African-American women owning the uh, champagne, but here we are. So tell us about the brand and the launch of it. It's really fascinating uh, story. Yeah, so Beast Stuyvesant and Champagne was actually launched in February 2019 publicly. My background is I've worked on Wall Street for 20 years and wine was not in my official training. I was slowly working on a private label champagne, which is Beast Stuyvesant. At the time, it didn't have a name. Okay. I originally wanted to open up a champagne bar because I am a true lover of champagne in which I decided, okay, being that I'm based in New York, the bar would be in New York and Brooklyn where I'm born and raised from, I wanted it to reflect me. So I said, okay, let's make, have a house brand. Cause as you go to any bars, there's a house wine, house mm -hmm. brand. So I wanted house bubbles. And that's where B Stuyvesant came from. B Stuyvesant, the name alone is derived from the neighborhood I grew up in, Brooklyn, Bedford Stuyvesant. I decided right. to keep growing this out. When I worked in Wall Street on the weekends, I would grab a flight out on Friday, head to France on overnight, do my business on the weekend, grab a flight back, put, Sunday, getting in Monday morning, go to work. This was my process for over six months. And it began to take a toll on me. And also I felt out of love with finance. And then I fell mm -hmm. in love with champagne. And I said, you know, I battled with myself to say, okay, you know what? I went to school to be in finance. This is all I knew. I made sure I went to graduate school so that I can be competitive with my peers and to make sure I am a go-to person within the industry. And I just realized like, I'm no longer that person. So right. I decided to take the plunge and I said, okay, you know, I'm going to go to the land of consistent <laughs> income, benefits, PTA, all, all the perks, yeah. to the land of being a full-time entrepreneur where yeah. you don't know where it's coming from someday. So basically that's how I really kicked off and we're approaching two years on February 12th. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy. When we first launched, we had only two cuvées. Now we have a total of eight cuvées with two being seasonal, one I see on your desk. So I'm very happy where the brand is going, has started going, of course, naturally, as in with any new business, we had some bumps along the road, still have some bumps that we're ironing out. Mm -hmm. um, COVID was not our friend, but we made it our friend. We had some issues with getting our shipments, um, as in with all other industries, but we're here. So I yeah. say like through the good and the bad, the good overweighs the bad. I'm happy to bring this brand to life. I'm happy to be a new brand, being competitive onto different sh stores, shelves, and making this a, yeah. a new homecoming, housewarming name <laughs> on the show to say, hey, I want to be Stuyvesant. So that's what I'm here to do. <laughs> yeah, well, the brand is out there, um, hearing about it, all different publications and whatnot. So what is your winemaking philosophy and approach? So my philosophy is we sip it, let's learn about it. So if you ever visit our Instagram page, when we post different cuvées or notes about champagne, I always give like a mini lesson, not overbearing so people can take tips of it. And that's really how I learned. I was kind of ignorant on, I didn't know. And then one, I learned on my own. And then I also learned with having formal training with champagne. And for mm -hmm. our, our winemaking process, we use the traditional methods. So we have two fermentations in a bottle. For beef Stuyvesant, we do fresh disgorgement. So quarterly basis, uh, we do fresh disgorgements where we pick a day we're doing production and we do the mm -hmm. production for the next three months. I'm a strong believer in not just having bottles just sitting there. So when people get their yes. bottles, I want them to know that you're getting a fresh bottle. It's just not sitting here, oh, done. And right. you're just going out. There's a lot of work put into it on the back scenes. I'm very hands-on at the vineyard. I'm hands-on in the business all the way around. Sometimes I'm too hands-on. <laughs> Sometimes I need to just like let go of my, my business. When it's a new business, you know, it's my toddler. You know, I still have to, you know, form this toddler to be a young adult, to be a grown <laughs> individual. So that's how I like to look at it. That's a good way to look at it. A lot of patience that is involved. Yeah. A lot of patience, growing pains. So what, what kind of impact or change would, would you like to make on, on the wine world? I would like to just show that there's diversity in the industry, right? So mm -hmm. we all know that the wine industry is not diverse with one 
African Americans, not diverse with women. And mm -hmm. I want to show that for people who are younger or who are thinking to say, hey, I think I want to do this, that it can be done. I did not have not one connect to say, hey, let me do this for you. I had one friend that gave me an introduction. That introduction didn't originally work. So I had to go out and keep finding my own right. and building my own. Okay. I could tell you when I first started, I didn't even know how to fold a box, it was like a shipping <laughs> box. I kind of didn't know what to do, how to do it. We were buying tape from, from local stores. We should be yeah. buying it. So I didn't know how to pack. I didn't know anything. I had to figure out where do you even get labels from for the bottles? And I'm yeah. happy to say that I think I drove a lot of people crazy. Creating the labels, I found a company that works with me. Initially, I couldn't do the high volume. So I had to pay the higher prices because I was on a budget and only had so much money. I fund the business myself. I don't have any investors, no venture capitalist money, no loans. So wow. this all came from myself. So I had to work with my money. And as we began to grow, I was able to actually begin to put everything in place that I wanted to. So start small yeah. and I slowly grow it out. But back to your original question, if you could think and you can achieve it is what I want people to yeah. take away from it in, in the industry, but specifically in the wine industry, that there is diversity, mm -hmm. even though it's not my traditional background. I don't come from France. I don't speak yeah. French. But if it's something you truly believe in, you want to do, you put the time and the effort and you you get the education, you get the training, you be hands on so that you know how everything operates and moves and how the actual vineyard flows versus just saying, I, I own this. Oh yeah, I do own it, but I'm an integral part of the overall process. Right. And I think we have to take it upon ourselves as, as retailers and sellers of wine too, to, mm -hmm. to boost up the communities of color and other minorities that are getting into this business because it is is largely generational, right? Exactly. <laughs> so then nobody, nobody passed down the champagne house to you. <laughs> it would have been nice, right? though. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it is important for for retailers and people that have a platform to to boost and uh, promote. You know, folks like yourselves that are awesome. that are doing it. <laughs> what surprised you most about the wine world once you started making the champagne? The closed mindedness. Mm. That really yeah. sh shocked me. I mean, I, like I said, I worked on Wall Street before, so I, Wall Street's another industry that's not fully diverse. But right. the wine industry, it could be, um, it was just a closed mindedness or when I first began to introduce myself, what I was working on, what I had. And the question would be, well, you know what champagne is. It only has to be, it can only become champagne if I'm a champagne region. Where does this right. come from? And, you know, right. have to be polite and kind mm -hmm. of things. And this is a closed mindedness. And then yeah. there's another half where the, the openness and the embracing and the support. And that was clutch for me or key for me because your family and friends are always going to support you first, right? So right. when I launched, yes, everybody wanted to buy bottles because it's my family and my friends. What I began to appreciate and what I really truly appreciate is the people that didn't know me directly that's read the read an article somewhere or found out a brand, did their mm -hmm. research, and then they tried it out. They liked it. And then they, you know, returning consumers. And then even our first holiday, we had New Year's Eve and people are popping Stuyvesant for like <laughs> 2021, going into 2022, or even 2020 going to 2021. That was like really good and for me to see that, OK, we're we're making impact. And it's just not based in New York. We have consumers over in California, right. Texas. Um, Colorado. So those things really feel good when I see that. And then people are enjoying the bubbles, you know, people right. are sending questions or what should I do with this? How can I pair this? And that's what right. I like to see. You're helping us achieve our mission too, because with the launch of Corbin's sparkling system, we're really yeah. encouraging people to enjoy sparkling wine and champagne every day because it can be enjoyed every day. So that actually is a good <laughs> segue into, into tasting the wines. Let's talk about the Prestige Rosé. Tell us about this wine. So the Prestige Rosé is a little bit different from our standard rosé, non-reserve rosé. So what I love about the Prestige Rosé is that it only comes from up to three maximum harvest seasons. With our traditional rosé, it can go up to five different um, harvest seasons. In addition, it's stored for an additional 36 months. So as oh, wow. you taste it, you can taste the, the strong floral notes, yep. the hints of berries, I always tell people when they, like what you just did, when you first take your sniff, you put your nose in your glass because you mm -hmm. taste with your mouth and also your nose because it yep. opens everything up. Very toasty, very yeah. nice, ripe, ripe strawberries. And firm um, bubbles, consistent yep. bubbles. Yep. Nice, long finish. This is, this is beautiful. I, I absolutely love this wine. What about food pairings with champagne? With any champagne, yeah. 
debate this with me sometimes, but or it's not really known as champagne pairs very well with fried chicken. The crispy oh, yeah. chicken and the acidity with the with the champagne pairs well. So with popcorn for the reserve prestige rose, I like to pair that with actually a nice grilled salmon, lightly mm. with like butter and capers and a smidge of not too much of a little bit of lemon zest on top pairs perfectly with it. Oh, that sounds awesome. Because because people don't always think about pairing champagne with food, but it's such a great food, right? It, it has high acidity and a lot of times it's they're re- dry or relatively dry. What's the great composition in the Prestige Rosé? So this is actually Pinot Noir and this is actually Meunier grape. So let's talk about the Demi Second. I'm going to take the opportunity to demo the Corvin Sparkling System. So I first opened this bottle yesterday. You can see it still maintains its uh, fizziness. Smoking a little bit at the top there. And you'll see in the glass, nice bubbles still. It's consistent. Yeah, yeah. And then you put the stopper back on. All the way on. And then you have this charger, which is a little hard to see. And when this little indicator turns back to green, you know it's been charged with CO2. So tell me about the demi sec. Demi sec, per the name, it has a smidge of sweetness to it. It's not mm-hmm. like a, a do of anything, which is an ultimate dessert wine. It is a little bit sweeter than the traditional brew. So it has yeah. more doshes, doshes is sugar in the cuvee. What I like about the demi sec is it actually is not as sweet as many people think it is when they hear demi sec. Right. It yeah. More, but it does. And it's still also, also very floral as well. I'm also partial to dry champagne. And this just has the perfect little kiss of sweetness. And it's super, super, super balanced and really has like an unctuous like mouthfeel and just beautiful. So really, really well done on on this one. I absolutely love it. What about food pairings with the demi sec? Anything in particular? For the demi sec, with the sweetness, I would kind of move more to the dessert side only because I would do stuff with like with fresh fruit, specifically strawberries, a nice cake with a glaze on it. We actually have this like champagne infused popcorn, which has like Belgian chocolate on it. Ooh. It pairs well together with the demi sec. It's absolutely delicious. Both these wines are available on the Corbin Wine Shop. So check them out. Yay. Wine.corbin.com. Thank you so much, Marvina. I wish you, I wish you lots of continued success and, and we'll keep drinking the champagne. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks.